It's been nearly four years since Star Trek Discovery aired its first episode. Some fans rushed out to get CBS All Access, while others said putting it behind a paywall was outrageous. Then there were those who said they would wait and see. There were also concerns from some fans that new Star Trek wasn't listening to the fan base. But for the most part, everyone was united in the excitement that Star Trek was being made again. And historically, the Star Trek fandom has been mostly united in its love for the property. Sure, there were those original series people who hated Next Gen for a season or two. <laughs> Then there were some descending voices when Janeway took the helm, until they realized she was a badass leader. Some people felt a little overtracked during the TNG, DS9, and Voyager overlaps, and you can't forget the Enterprise haters who covered their ears during the awkward theme song. Just like that. But when the dust settled, the fandom was still in love with Star Trek. But on that Sunday afternoon, on September 24th, 2017, following the first new episode of Star Trek made for fans in 12 years, the fandom shattered like a giant pane of glass dashed against the rock. And now, nearly four years have passed, and the fandom is still as broken as it's ever been. It's sad to think that one of the first TV fandoms ever formed might be forever fractured into old versus new. It's troubling to think what it meant to be a Trekkie in the past will be different than what it means in the future. Weren't we all united in one hope for the future? A shining city on top of a hill where everyone has a seat at the table. But what if we told you there was a way to put the pieces back together again? What if we told you there was a plan in place right now to forge the broken pieces of our Trekkie fandom heart and make it whole again? That the words of fans who said, this is not what Trek is supposed to be, were heard, and changes were being put in place. With the goal to make new Star Trek shows the way fans fell in love with them and holding the ideals that Star Trek has represented for more than half a century. And we believe this plan has been in place for longer than anyone realizes. If you like the Trek streaming now, then sit back and enjoy the cherry on top of the sundae we are about to serve you. If you hate New Trek, watch this closely because this is the first step in taking Star Trek in a direction you will enjoy. And for those of you who've been watching because it's the only Trek we have, but hoping for it to become more like the Trek you remember and love, this is the video for you. Because we are about to show you how Star Trek Strange New Worlds is going to save Star Trek. It is the struggle itself that is most important. We must strive to be more than we are, Law. It does not matter that we will never reach our ultimate goal. The effort yields its own rewards. But before we share this exciting revelation, make sure you stay tuned until later in the show where we'll be showing you why NordVPN makes an excellent partner for giving you control of your internet experience across the globe. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so now and give us a thumbs up if you want more amazing revelations about your favorite shows. Also, click the notification bell to never miss an episode because YouTube is a fickle mistress. And make sure you stay tuned to the end to see how to get this awesome Star Trek graphic design from the amazing artists at MixTease.com. Everyone has the right to love and hate what they want. That's the beauty of being free. And we should respect their right to those opinions even if we don't agree with them. Some people will be upset at the suggestion that Star Trek needs to be saved at all. And others will say that under the current leadership and writers, Trek can't be saved. But no matter what side you are on, the reality is that if something doesn't change this divided fandom, there will be no new Star Trek in the future. More than 2,000 Star Trek fans across YouTube, Reddit, and Twitter were asked anonymously to choose between three statements. New Star Trek is good, people should stop hating. I'm watching because it's Star Trek, but I hope it gets better. It's a dumpster fire, I won't watch anything new. The results showed exactly how fractured the fandom currently is. 28% of people polled said Star Trek is good like it is. 32% said they are watching but hope it gets better. And 40% of those polled said they hate it 
and will never watch it. Remember these numbers because they are the proof that changes are coming as we will show you. These numbers are the definition of a fractured fandom. And you can bet that Star Trek producers, CBS and Paramount have taken similar polls and understand the fandom is largely in distress. Before going in on the all-access streaming services, CBS had been offered large sums of money by Netflix and Amazon to produce new Star Trek series. When CBS decided to bet on their own content, they wouldn't be able to afford a fractured fandom for long. They can't afford to keep making Star Trek that the majority of their fans don't love. Enter Strange New Worlds. The show is considered a spin-off of Discovery, but the reality is that it's been waiting to be made for 55 years. It's the story of Christopher Pike, who captained the Starship Enterprise before Captain Kirk. Strange New Worlds will focus on the 8 to 10 years before Kirk and the events of the original Star Trek series take place. Captain Pike's key bridge officers include a young Spock and a resourceful number one, keeping with Gene Roddenberry's original vision in Star Trek's original pilot. And when we say they are keeping with Roddenberry's original vision, we mean more than having a woman as number one. But let's get back to that in a moment. Star Trek Strange New Worlds is a unicorn. It simply shouldn't exist. And the fact that we are getting this series sometime in 2022 is because no matter what CBS, Paramount, or Alex Kurtzman thinks, the fans are the heart and soul of Star Trek. And when an overwhelming number of fans demanded more Pike at just the right time, the fans got exactly what they wanted. And this voice of the fandom is why the Star Trek universe will begin to morph back into the show everyone loves. But let's start at the beginning. While Star Trek head Alex Kurtzman gets most of the blame from fans who felt Discovery was a train wreck coming out of the gate, the reality is Brian Fuller got that train rolling in the first place. Fuller, a writer for Deep Space Nine and Voyager, had been advocating for Star Trek's return to television for a long time. Fuller, who is openly gay, wanted Star Trek to return because of its impact on minority groups. He commented that he couldn't stop thinking about black people inspired by Nichelle Nichols and Asian people seeing George Takei and the hope that gave them seeing there was a place for them in the future. Fuller knew right away that like Nichelle and George, he wanted a gay character to be in the spotlight and for the LGBT community to have the same feeling that the future is for them too. Fuller remembered receiving hate mail during Star Trek Voyager by a fan that thought Seven of Nine would be gay, and he vowed that if he ever did another Star Trek series, it would introduce someone who is gay. Fuller said he wanted to carry on what Star Trek did best, which was being progressive. He wanted to look at every role through a colorblind and genderblind prism. The star of the show would be an African-American woman as well. And why not? Voyager featured a female captain, which was progressive at a time when women in the US military were just being allowed to serve on combat ships. And what about Deep Space Nine? Captain Sisko was an excellent captain, an African American. But Fuller, an advocate for change, didn't stop there. He wanted Trek to be true, but he wanted it to be very different. The lead character, Michael Burnham, wouldn't be the captain, as had been the lead for every other Star Trek series. She also would be unlike other Starfleet officers fans were used to. But before we explain how Fuller would go against Roddenberry's vision, let me tell you why we love this video's sponsor. NordVPN has been instrumental with so many things we do online. Something as simple as watching the HD remastered version of The Next Generation had not been available on Netflix in the United States, so we booted up NordVPN and was able to stream it from the UK. Besides streaming to our heart's content, NordVPN protects our IP address. Today it's simple to find where someone is located while they are online. NordVPN gives us the peace of mind that we have the privacy and protection we need while creating awesome YouTube content for our fans. One of the best things about NordVPN is that your subscription can be used on up to six devices. Don't miss this limited time offer to protect your online experience. Go to nordvpn.com slash the popcast to get 73% off the two-year plan plus four additional months free for only $3.18 a month. 
there is a 30-day money-back guarantee if you aren't completely satisfied. Fuller and his writing room chose to ignore Roddenberry's long-standing rule that Starfleet crew members not have any significant conflict with one another or be depicted negatively. The team reasoned that since this was a prequel to the original series, they could work up to Roddenberry's ideals instead of adopt them outright. They must have forgot that Discovery takes place three years after the pilot for Star Trek the original series, where Roddenberry's vision is fully laid out already. Fuller and his team decided they wanted a show about struggle and conflict instead of hope and ideals. Fuller also wanted to completely redo the Klingons in look and style. The reality is that Fuller wanted to recreate Star Trek in his image of what Star Trek should be moving into the future. And Kurtzman doesn't get a pass. He confirmed that prior to Fuller leaving, he promised him the story, characters, big ideas, and movement of the season wouldn't be altered. Fuller's vision was firmly put into place for the first season of Discovery. Fuller was ultimately fired by CBS for continuously missing deadlines and forcing the streaming service to push the show's launch date back multiple times. His work on American Gods was spreading him thin, and executives felt his attention should be on Star Trek. Once Fuller left, his co-showrunners Gretchen Berg and Aaron Harberts took over the helm for season one. When Discovery hit the screen for the first time, it was generally agreed that they had put the $8.5 million per episode to good use. The show looked incredible with excellent cinematography and special effects. But for some fans, that's where the compliments stopped. After Michael Burnham disobeys orders, starts a war with the Klingons, and gets her captain killed, it became clear that the hallmark Star Trek optimism fans were used to would not be a part of this series. Following episodes would introduce fans to a mostly female cast, aside from two gay men, a male alien, and an evil male captain. The vision for an extremely progressive Star Trek was complete. And fans who understand what Star Trek is all about would have been fine with this. The problem is they broke a few critically important Star Trek rules that every new series needs for success. The first rule is that optimism and hope be featured alongside characters who do the morally correct thing because it represents the ideals of Starfleet. The second rule is that the captain is the glue of the show, and as fans we are anchored by the notion that he or she is the embodiment of good and the ideals of Starfleet. And while any crew member may stray from those ideals, the captain will always bring them back and make sure the ship does the right thing. And finally, Fuller, Kurtzman, and their teams did a great job representing women and the LGBT community and evil men around the world. But do you know what was missing? A non-LGBT good guy. And sorry, Saru, aliens don't count. What did Fuller say from the beginning? People want to see themselves represented in a positive way in the future. Discovery left out an important part of the fandom. There are no stats that break down Star Trek fans by gender, race, and sexual orientation. But if we look at what we know, it's easy to see the issue with some fans. According to Gallup polls, about 4.5% of the population identifies as LGBT. So let's assume that between 5 and 10% of the fandom identifies as that. Star Trek YouTube channel statistics report a male-dominated audience of between 80 and 90%. That would leave about 20% of the fandom being women. Since we don't know for sure, Let's say 30% of the fandom is made up of women, and there are more men watching YouTube for whatever reason. Let's be fair and also say 10% of the fandom is made up of evil guys who were rooting for Lorca to win. That still leaves half of the fan base unrepresented in Fuller's Star Trek future. Perhaps the team was wrapped up in progressive Trek and forgot about the rest. Or maybe they thought turning a Klingon into one was good enough. The bottom line is Discovery left people behind and fans noticed. Kurtzman said in several interviews that it's hard not to take the criticism personal. 
While industry insiders and critics gave Discovery high marks, longtime fans all over the internet began criticizing the new show, and according to insiders, it bothered Kurtzman more than he let on. But Star Trek Discovery was in motion, and it was too late to change everything. All they could do is make course corrections along the way. We believe that by mid-first season, Kurtzman knew the trouble brewing with longtime fans, and it wouldn't get better unless something changed. That change was coming, but it didn't come from Kurtzman. First season co-showrunner Aaron Harberts was the one interested in exploring Captain Pike. He felt that he had not been seen much in Star Trek previously and would be an interesting character. He wasn't interested in exploring Spock, feeling like that character had many appearances in the franchise, and he was reluctant to have anyone other than Leonard Nimoy or Zachary Quinto play him. I like science. But Kurtzman and executives locked onto the idea of Spock, thinking it would give fans a better connection to the show. But in order to introduce Spock, they would also need to introduce Pike and the Enterprise. It was confirmed Spock, along with Pike and Number One, would be on Discovery in April 2018. Harberts and Berg were let go in June. That same month, Kurtzman signed a five-year deal with CBS to expand the Star Trek franchise. He also became the Discovery showrunner for Season 2. And that's when we started hearing things about Section 31 and Starfleet Academy shows. Little did they know, the spin-off they would choose was about to join Discovery for Season 2. From the moment Anson Mount entered the show as Captain Pike, it was like a breath of fresh air. It was the small injection of hope the show needed. It was plain and obvious that Pike was a good man, with excellent leadership skills, and upheld the ideals of a Starfleet fan's love. For many fans who still didn't like Discovery, Pike wasn't enough to counterbalance the storyline of Michael and Spock being siblings. That realization rocked the fan base. Some people said, what's the big deal? And others said, Spock never mentioned a sister. Others felt like canon was not getting the respect it deserved. Arguments would ensue. Despite the upheaval, Kurtzman had been listening to fans. The Klingons got their hair back. Apparently, they only shaved during war. Someone forgot to tell Worf. Not like last time. Oh no, just a little off the top. <laughs> no, took way too much off last time. Another fan complaint was that Discovery wasn't very fun. Pike brings a twinkle in his eye to season two, but there is also the addition of comedian Tig Notaro in a supporting role. Fans also wanted more member berries, so Kurtzman gave them the TOS uniforms and Michael got a tour of the Enterprise just for the fans' enjoyment. But the continuity issues were still there. How were they going to explain the spore drive? Discovery seemed very technologically advanced compared to, say, the Enterprise. Also, how would they reconcile Michael and Spock's relationship and explain why no one ever heard of her? Kurtzman has famously said that if half the fans hate your work and half of them love it, then you are okay because that's the nature of the internet. But as our poll shows, more than 70% of fans want Star Trek to be better. Even if only half of your fans hate your work, do you think network executives are going to be okay with losing money they can't afford to lose? There is no doubt that behind the scenes there was pressure to bring more of the fan base back to Star Trek. Kurtzman began repeating in every interview how important it was to listen to the fans and that the fans were the force behind Star Trek. And once Kurtzman saw the fan outpour for Pike, he realized there was an opportunity to make a necessary change. He knew Discovery could no longer exist as it currently was. There were too many errors that needed to be fixed. Online petitions started to spring up for Pike to be in a spin-off series set on the Enterprise with Rebecca Romaine as number one and Ethan Peck as Spock. The path was becoming clear. The fans wanted the Enterprise, but there was no way Discovery and Enterprise could exist together. Discovery had to go because its existence would only cause more issues for canon. Kurtzman's decision to send Discovery 930 years into the future is the only thing he could do for the series and not admit they had made mistakes. Discovery is now free to do whatever it wants, safely outside of the Star Trek timeline, and Strange New Worlds can become the Star Trek show we should have had from the beginning. But what about Picard? 
Whether you like Picard or not, the truth of the matter is we only have a Picard series because it is completely different from Star Trek The Next Generation. Patrick Stewart did not want to return to Picard. He only agreed to return if the character was totally different than how he had played him before. While people have been critical of the writing, being able to see Riker, Troy, Seven, and Data was worth it for many fans. While the show is still missing the Starfleet optimism fans love, Season 2 will have Q, Guinan, and hopefully a more developed storyline for Seven. The point here is that neither Discovery nor Picard are an outline for the future of Star Trek on TV. Strange New Worlds is a change to give the fans what they want while still growing the franchise. Not convinced? From the moment they greenlit the series, they have all been pitching the same message. Alex Kurtzman via Twitter on May 15, 2020. We heard you, and thank you to all the amazing fans for your Trek love. Let us boldly go together to Strange New Worlds. Also, at the same time, Akiva Goldsman had written the first episode of the series and said it would be more optimistic and episodic than Discovery and Picard. He said it would be in a style closer to the original series. In August 2020, Kurtzman said he felt audiences respond to Pike's relentless optimism and said the show would explore how Pike remains an optimistic leader despite learning about his tragic future while on Discovery. Pike's Enterprise will meet new aliens see new ships, and visit new cultures. Still not convinced? April 2021. Anson Mount, in an interview with Collider, said that Star Trek, by nature, is episodic. Star Trek can be a lot of things, but classic Trek is really founded on the big idea of the week, and the big idea of the week needs room to breathe. There will be larger plot arcs, but it is really back to the alien of the week. June 2021. Rebecca Romaine made a point to say Strange New Worlds would feature standalone episodes with lots of Easter eggs during the first season that fans will love. She and the crew are very excited to introduce the show to the fan base. July 2021. Anson Mount, while wrapping up filming of the finale, says, Old school fans are going to be very excited. And while it's true, Strange New Worlds isn't a magic wand that can heal all wounds. If you want Trek to be better, to embrace that which was loved, combine it with something new to create a style and tone that future spin-offs can embrace to the joy of all Trekkies, then you should get excited about this new series. Star Trek Strange New Worlds can be that Star Trek show where everyone has a seat at the table. The ideals of Starfleet are upheld and revered, and we once again explore our galaxy in search of new life and new civilizations, boldly going where no human being has gone before but it will be up to you to give it a chance. Will you be watching Star Trek Strange New Worlds when it comes out? Let's talk about it in the comments below. Also, check out this Vulcan in the Streets, Klingon in the Sheets, inspired graphic design at MixTees.com and get 20% off your purchase by using coupon code THEPOPCAST. The link is in the description below. Don't want the show to end? Become a Popcast member by hitting the join button to get exclusive content including special member live streams, Discord privileges, behind the scenes access, and so much more. Click join and let's hang out. Also, make sure you head over and subscribe to the Popcast Unleashed for discussions, updates, clips, and other special videos. Click on the link below. Until next time, 